Greetings, everyone. Elvis Aaron Presley in the house. Before we dive into the chapters of my life, I thought it'd be fun to reminisce about the legendary parties that rocked Graceland. I wasn't one to take things lightly. My shindigs rivaled even the grandeur of Hugh Hefner's affairs. Now take a gander at the initial snapshot. Here's yours truly, surrounded by a lively entourage of 22 lovely ladies right on my front lawn. Uh, this particular soiree unfolded during Valentine's, mind you, and uh, Priscilla happened to be out of town at the time. Talk about throwing a bash fit for the king. Please don't ever tell my wife about these parties, please. Now in this next snapshot, I hosted yet another epic bash, seizing the opportunity while Priscilla enjoyed a European vacation with her mother. Out on my front lawn, you catch a glimpse of 15 dazzling ladies, but let me spill the beans. Inside Graceland, the party was in full swing with a whopping 100 or more. Q Hefner, step aside. My gatherings outshine yours any day. When I take the stage and serenade these enchanting ladies, they just, just flock to me like bees to honey. Talk about a soiree fit for a legend. Now, you all promise to keep your mouth shut and say nothing to my wife. Is that correct? Now, in this final unearthed photograph, we're talking spring break vibes. Priscilla once more was away visiting her family, and you know me. I seized the chance to host yet another extravagant soiree. The snapshot captures a scene on my Graceland front lawn, featuring 25 fabulous women. Yet let me lift the curtain on the real spectacle. Inside, an additional 200 stunning ladies, showcasing a spectrum of beauty, from brunettes to blondes to redheads, were reveling and eagerly anticipating my turn to take the stage and keep the party alive. The energy was electric, and the night was destined for legendary status. Hey there, folks. It's the king of rock and roll, Elvis Presley, taking you on a journey from the very beginning. Sure. I was born on January 8, 1935, in Tupelo, Mississippi, to Gladys and Vernon Presley. Life wasn't always easy. We didn't have much, but we had love. Growing up in Tupelo was a humble beginning and I learned to appreciate music at an early age. My family attended the Assembly of God Church where the gospel music stirred something deep within me. Just little did I know that these early influences would shape my destiny. In 1948, we moved to Memphis, Tennessee, and that's where my musical journey truly began. I started experimenting with various genres, blending blues, gospel, and country. It was a melting pot of sounds that would later define my unique style. Fast forward to 1954, and my breakthrough moment arrived. I recorded That's All Right at Sun Studio, catching the attention of the world. The energy, the rhythm, and the charisma. It was something new, something exciting. The birth of rock and roll, they called it. The next few years were a whirlwind of success, with hits like Heartbreak Hotel and Hound Dog propelling me into stardom. The fans, the screams, the Elvis mania, it was beyond anything I could have imagined. But fame comes with its challenges. 1958, Uncle Sam called, and I answered. I served in the U.S. Army in Germany, a period that, that shaped my character and, and gave me a new, new perspective on life. Sure. Now let's talk about my love for peanut butter and banana sandwiches. It's true, I couldn't resist them. Sure. The combination of creamy peanut butter and ripe bananas became a trademark snack. Sure. It's funny how these little quirks become part of your legacy. Sure. As the 60s unfolded, I ventured into acting. Movies like Blue Hawaii and Jailhouse Rock uh, allowed me to explore new facets of my talent. My career took a new turn with a focus on movies. From Love Me Tender to Viva Las Vegas, I embraced the challenge of acting while still keeping the music alive. It was a different era, and I enjoyed experimenting with various roles on the silver screen. Now, about those peanut butter and banana sandwiches, they became a comfort, a familiar taste amid the chaos. The simple pleasures in life often take on a special significance, don't they? In the late 60s, my iconic television comeback special marked a return to my musical roots. The intimate setting, the black leather outfit, and the raw energy rekindled the flame of rock and roll. It was a moment of rediscovery for me and a gift to the fans who've been with me from the start. The 70s brought both triumphs and tribulations. Hits like Suspicious Minds and Burning Love continued to captivate audiences, but health concerns and personal struggles took their toll. Despite the challenges, I kept performing, connecting with my fans through the music we all loved. And then came August 16, 1977, the day the music paused. 
My passing shook the world, leaving fans mourning the loss of a cultural icon. Graceland, my beloved home, became a pilgrimage site for those seeking a connection to the king. But let's not dwell on the end. Let's celebrate the enduring legacy. My daughter Lisa Marie, she's been a guardian of my memory, ensuring that the spirit of Elvis Presley lives on. The Elvis Presley Charitable Foundation continues to make a positive impact, supporting various causes and scholarships. Now, back to the present. Celebrity Recreations, under the guidance of Chris Dallas, continues to captivate audiences with daily transformations. Subscribe, like, comment, and follow to witness the magic unfold as we breathe new life into legendary figures. The story doesn't end, it evolves, and we're thrilled to have you along for the ride. Now let me throw in a few bonuses here for you all. I'm going to let you in on a, a few secrets many people don't know about me. So here are some rare facts. So let's dive deep into the Elvis archives. Did you know that back in the day, your boy Elvis was offered a gig as an undercover agent for the Bureau of Narcotics and Dangerous Drugs? Yep. They wanted the king to help him fight the good fight against drugs. Now, I may have been all shook up on stage, but off stage, I held my own. Yours truly was a black belt in karate, and I even took down a few bad guys in my day. Elvis wasn't just about music. I fancied myself a bit of a chef. Peanut butter and banana sandwiches, anyone? Grilled to perfection, just the way the king liked it. I once told my friends about a UFO sighting I had. Yep, up there in the sky. Maybe E.T. was just a hunk of hunk of burning love fan, who knows. The King had a sit down with President Nixon, believe it or not. We chatted about rock and roll and even got me a badge as an honorary drug enforcement agent. Now that's a unique White House tour. Elvis loved giving gifts. One time I gave away a car just because someone liked it. And hey, I had a few Cadillacs lying around, so why not spread the love? Now don't let this hip swiveler fool you. I loved me some reading. I had a whole library at Graceland, and sci-fi was my jam. Can't beat a good book, baby. Ever heard of the jungle room at Graceland? Sure. That's right, I turned a regular old room into a jungle paradise. Just another way the king brought a little exotic flair to Tennessee. When I wasn't crooning, I was kicking it with karate. But did you know I once broke a record for breaking boards? Yeah, music and martial arts, the Elvis package deal. Now, I was known for my love of Cadillacs, but here's a kicker. I once bought a whole dealership's worth of Cadillacs and gave them away like candy. Just call me Santa in a jumpsuit. The name Elvis has a unique origin. It's an anglicized version of the Scandinavian name Elfwine, meaning all-wise or all-friendly. So y'all can call me all-friendly Elvis if you like. Before I became the king, I tried my hand at being a truck driver. And let me tell you, driving those big rigs sure taught me a thing or two about the open road. While I'm known as the king of rock and roll, I had a soft spot for country music. I even won three Grammy Awards for my gospel and country tunes. Now, I might have been rich and famous, but I loved me a good bargain. I'd often visit pawn shops searching for hidden treasures. Ain't no shame in my thrifty game. Forget the peanut butter and banana, I had a thing for grilled peanut butter and bacon sandwiches. Sure. A little bit of a savory to balance out the sweet, you dig? Sure. The king held the record for the most significant uh, attendance at a single concert. Sure. Aloha from Hawaii in 1973 was broadcast to over a billion people. Now that's what I call a crowd. Sure. I once gave President Lyndon B. Johnson a pocket square as a good luck charm. Who knew the king's fashion sense could bring a little luck to the Oval Office? Forget tour buses. I had a couple of private planes named after my daughter, Lisa Marie. Flying high in style, that's how the king rolled. Karate wasn't my only martial art. I dabbled in judo, too. A little hip toss here, a smooth move there. Just keeping things interesting. All right, so uh, there you have it, friends. Some rare Elvis trivia for you. Hope you enjoyed these little-known facts about the king along with my life story. Now, for updates, behind-the-scenes glimpses, and more, check out our social media channels displayed on your screen and available in the description below. Stay tuned, because at Celebrity Recreations, the magic never stops. Sure. Thank you for being part of my life here today and the ongoing journey at Celebrity Recreations. Well, it's time to leave the building, just like the good old days. Remember, darling, take care of yourselves out there.
This is Elvis Presley signing off and bidding you all farewell. <laughs>